Sorry, Brother Habi. Let's see what else this guy has to say. The ship to Abyssinia and then not being able to speak the language, not having anyone to negotiate for her. It would be damn difficult for this young Arab woman not to end up as a slave under some other uh, captive by another Arab or non Arab man. So clearly, it wasn't like she's going to get alimony, right? It's, the options for her are limited. Just to add a little bit of salt to the, her wounds, when Muhammad died, Aisha was never allowed to get married again. She had to be celibate for the rest of her life. Muhammad decided, or Allah decided, that his wives may never ever get married again. Okay, she chose this, right? She chose this life. She knew what she's getting herself into. She knew what being a mother of the believers for the rest of the days on earth. Uh, his entails. argument is ridiculous, man. His argument. Yeah. We've already shown before that they he's had saying, the choice. He's saying after he died, she was forced out. That, that's why he's not making any sense to say he's uh, gives them the choice in the beginning while he's still alive. That means this is what you're going to go through. You're the mother of the believers and you have to understand that responsibility. So it's not that, okay, after he died, she found herself stuck with it and with no way out. She chose that. The the mothers of believers chose that and it was an honor to them. So a lot of I, I guess we could just move on on these stuff. Yeah, let's just move on. I'm done with this guy already, to be honest with you. Special. You see, Muhammad was so intensely jealous that he didn't even want his wives to have sex after he died. What was he so insecure about? Yes, no Did he maybe think that he would no, no have the sex life after he died? I don't know what he was so worried about. I mean, he had the validity of 10 so men, cringe. supposedly. Whatever the case was, Aisha, from a young age, or however old she was, whether she was 18 or 21, in her early 20s at best, had to live her entire rest of her life celibate, never able to enjoy a healthy sexual relationship with another man. Who would want to go through that? What a sacrifice she had to make. And she had no choice in this matter. She was told, you may never marry again. Right, so he thinks from a purely materialistic point of view. He disregards everything that Aja thought about or prioritized. Yeah. She prioritized being the mothers of the believers for the rest of time. Right? That's what, he, that's what she chose. She chose that that life. She chose to be the teacher of the He's Muslim. seen it from an atheistic perspective that this is, this is it. This is it. Exactly. You only exactly. have this life. That's it. So now let's just, uh, you yeah, know. She's, she think, he thinks. Uh, yeah, let, she let's just. She, she didn't have money or whatever. Neither you nor any of your co wives, any of the wives of Muhammad, may never ever have a, have a healthy relationship, may never ever live with a man, may never have any companionship after this day once Muhammad died. What an unfortunate situation for all of those women, Aisha included. So you see, Aisha may have spoke favorably about Muhammad. But really, what choice did she have? It was in her best interest to do what she no, could. She had choice. Uh, hey, hold on a second. What do you mean she had a choice? After Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, has gone back to his Lord, uh, she had the choice not to teach. She had the choice not to transmit hadith. She had the choice not to go to be one of the biggest scholars of his ummah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Let me, let me give another example. Uh, when, when, uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was walking with Aisha, and they passed by a group of Jews. And they told the Prophet Sallallahu right? As-Samu Alaika, instead yeah. of As-Salamu Alaika. As-Salamu Alaika means death upon you, Muhammad. Poison, right? death, yeah. Yeah, what, what, how did Aisha react? Uh, she got very angry, and she, yeah. first, she said to them, uh, she basically said the same thing upon them, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Kind of like cooled her down. It was, it was, yeah, it was it was calming her down. Calming her down. Was, she, yeah, shows yeah. the jealousy and the love for the Prophet Sallallahu She did not want some, you know, bunch of some, uh, you know, disbelievers to uh, curse the Prophet Sallallahu So she defended her husband. So what kind of oppressed woman would do that? That her husband has to calm her down. Like it's okay. Like, it's you don't have to upset them. And he's yeah. looking at Aisha as if she's like that materialistic woman who cares about just the enjoyment of this life. Like Khalil said, he's he's seeing it from an atheistic point of view. He's not looking at that Aisha is the mother of believers. And she's the wife of the best of mankind that she's going to be with him in heaven for eternity. For eternity. And the one who, who saw the best of creation, how could he even think about another man? You tell me that. When we have right now women, Normal women married to normal men. When they die, they live the rest. They live the rest of their lives single. They, li they live the, right, uh, the rest of their lives single because they they love their husbands and they don't want to be with another man. This is the uh, 
the Others. level of love that they have for the husbands, and these are just normal women, normal Muslims. But how about the, the, the Prophet's wife? So this is yeah. absolutely read this ridiculous. Hadith. This is it. Read this hadith and tell me if she if, if this sounds like a woman who is forced and or a woman that doesn't doesn't love her husband. Yeah. So here's 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 the hadith. Aisha reported. When I saw the Prophet Sallallahu in a cheerful face or, or a good mood, she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, supplicate to Allah for me. Pray, yani pray, pray to Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, O oh Allah, forgive Aisha for her past and future sins in secret and public. Aisha laughed so much that her head fell from his lap. Right? <laughs> so just picture the scene. Picture bro, this bro, scene. bro, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi where him and Aisha, they would race. They would race. They would uh, race. Then, would, uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, he, she, she, she would she would put her she, she put her cheek on his on his cheek, and she was leaning on him, just trying to watch. Uh, I think there was uh, some sort of. Uh, hey, had yeah, hey, had people these people can ever come near the relationship that yeah. Prophet Muhammad? I, 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 he he doesn't know anything about Aisha except that she was young when she married the Prophet. That's it. That's all he knows. She found herself in to be his favorite wife is better than not being his wife, I guess. To to you know use his name to get benefits and to get respect in the community is better, right? Okay, so what benefits? So he he, she, he said previously that Islam robbed her from big, from getting inheritance money, right? So what what are the benefits? And and he and he also said that uh, be, be, uh, being the wife of the Prophet sallallahu meant that she cannot uh, marry anyone anyone else after the Prophet died. So what are the benefits? He didn't he didn't mention any benefits, but now she's saying, "Oh, she remained with him because she was she would be getting benefits." What benefits? I'm not sure. This reminds me of the people the people that say, "Oh, people Property converted benefits. to Islam because of the jizya, because they want to get benefits," which makes <laughs> no, which makes no sense because jizya is the fr fraction of zakat. Anyways, so, so. <laughs> even though there were still conflicts after she died as to whether she should inherit from him. Thanks for watching. Check out my video, Would You Marry Your Adopted Son's Ex-Wife, for an animated feature of how Muhammad married another woman who he fancied and how... Bro, that's okay. Khalas, man. Jazakallah khair. This guy is refuted. He's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. Subhanallah. Um, any comments here, before we wrap up this? I don't think this guy respects women at all. He doesn't respect the choice of women. He doesn't respect their life. He doesn't respect what they want. He want to force on them his, his materialistic... Uh, nihilistic life he is insecure about his wife he's afraid that his wife is going to leave him to someone who's richer since he thinks uh, uh this life is all about money this life is all about you can give your, your material out of respect yeah but, uh, but i know some yeah, stuff look at that guy's face that look so at his face. yeah we don't want to like deal with his personal life uh yeah but he just dis definitely displayed no no I, I, you could feel it you could feel it it's someone he here knows uh to read people's expressions and people's words, the meaning behind words, you would know this guy is insecure. Absolutely, absolutely insecure. Definitely, this guy, bro. This guy we were talking about earlier, brother Halabi and I. This guy has a little channel where, an, another one, where he does, what is that, brother Halabi? Alpha male. He gives advice to be how to be an alpha male. Yeah, yeah. How, <laughs> how to be a solid rock man. I mean, <laughs> wow. I don't even know. I don't think it's worth. Here's giving you an advice how to be. <laughs> yeah. This is the last person I want to listen to. How to work out or how to boost my testosterone level naturally or how to deal with my wife or how to deal with people in general. You didn't <laughs> think to have any testosterone, Akhi. <laughs> it's like a piece of paper, believe me. Yeah, this is a dry piece of paper, honestly. And we're not saying that for anything. I think. It's been clear and it's shown out there how this guy is full of hate and security. He looks like a guy who never got any attention throughout his life. You want to go to life. the gym so you can look good? <laughs> I'm going to lose this big fat beer belly. Look at me, ma. I did this so I can look good for you. Are you proud of me? Are you proud of me? I can't stand this guy, bro. Like... Do you want to go to the gym? So this, you guy, this guy good? was bullied. Okay. <laughs> He was bullied through his life, and I'm not I'm not saying that's a reason why, but this guy definitely was bullied, and he had no he had he didn't know what he was doing. 
got to a level where he realized that there's an industry out there which is called ex muslim factory like a bunch of it's just like a farm with a bunch of sheep and they're just going there they're being pushed and so far no one has given us any strong evidence whether it's islam they're just basically a bunch of knuckleheads and we challenge you we challenge all of them you know challenge all of them uh come on in and give us your give us your best your best shot your best uh your alpha male but please don't send this guy i don't think because no one thinks he's even sigma male so get him out of, get him out of the list and send us someone who actually knows what they're talking about someone who speaks arabic language someone who understands the hadith someone who understands the quran and bring your evidence otherwise you're just a bunch of sheep in this new thing that's called ex-muslim factory or ex-muslim farm really um and then they realize there's an industry where they can make money get likes from all the islamophobes out there or missionaries they love these guys and then these guys start finally getting likes and getting followers and he's like yes i'm getting what i've never gotten in my life and he's continuing his his uh evil mission mm -hmm. so, do you know uh what his reason was for uh, for him leaving islam i don't know i think there were many one of them was like if it's personal, I really don't want to know, but... Not personal. Yeah. Yeah. If it's uh, Bacon, I think. Yeah, yeah. Bacon and beer and... Yeah. <laughs> like, so, and period sex. It was actually two, if I'm not mistaken. One was actually... Yeah, clean. I remember. That was from uh, part three of the podcast that we did when we were... Um... Like, he could not find Chochma <laughs> Chochma on Google. <laughs> like, that's, that's why he left Islam. And the other one yeah. was... Uh, yeah, look again! Was... Look again! They're there! Look but, again! Google but Maps. the other thing was uh, because uh, he could not explain uh, why the sun prostrates to Allah, and you know, he 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 cannot uh, imagine that. Like according to him, it must be something physical or something. But he fails to understand that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not uh, is not physic. He's uh, outside his creation. Allah alam how things work. You know. Exactly. But that's how he. Let's think he's thinking that the sun has now. some legs and, and hands and head and she no. she's prostrating like a human being. It is not that the word sujood really means to bowing down that it doesn't have to be physical. Bowing down is meaning something is gonna mm -hmm. submit to something else. Well, sujood literally means to submit. The sun submits to the creator however form it is. It doesn't have to be physical. These guys wanna wanna look at the sun and think of a human being, and they see how the human being prostrates. So the sun must prostrate the same way like a human being prostrates. That's absolutely not the, the, the same. Because we know that the shajar, the trees, prostrate to Allah, according to the Quran. Yeah. Right? So that we see the trees, and we don't do, see them doing any physical thing. So they, therefore, prostration is not physical. It's a form of submission to the Creator. Yeah. The sun does it. The trees does it, the rocks does it, everything in the universe submits to the creator. This is just it. So the, have to be like human beings. This guy thinks, um, just think about this for a second. He's basically saying that the Sahaba, <laughs> this, when, when the Quran was revealed, and Prophet Muhammad said the verse, the Sahaba thought, oh wow, yeah, see the sun that we see? Look, there are the hands and, and the legs, it's making sujood. This, this guy, is this guy, is, is this level of stupidity? I'm sorry to say that because it is really stupidity. Did you think that the people that heard the Quran really believed and they were fooled and they thought that actually the sun makes sujood like, 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 like you used to do it? Remember that? Uh, Why and, do we do sujood? What is, what is sujood to us? Sujood to us is putting your forehead onto the ground, the highest form. Now why? why? What's the reason for that? It's part of our salats. It also represents humbleness and represents that uh, okay, humili represents humility humbleness. and humility in front of the Creator. So when we do that, that's our sujood. Because now, we have a forehead. That's sujood. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we have a forehead. No, sujood to us is to humble ourselves yes, to the, the Creator. The point is to Th humble ourselves. This is our form of sujood. Yes, this is our form of sujood. The yeah. sun literally could, could submit to its Creator. Since God created it, it could submit to it and humble itself to it because we believe everything worships Allah so the, everything worships Allah the way Allah created them to do yes. everything pr praises Allah everything praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way they do not 
in our we shouldn't put ourselves as the standard and everything should be praising a god like us yeah that's, an, that's like anthropomorphism us, like us being muslims like us yeah it's, it's it's also called uh an argument from ignorance uh i don't know therefore it's false i don't yeah, know how it's it's, 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 it's so simple this guy is saying that 1400 years of of this ummah we're all wrong the sahaba were wrong the people do actually all these people thought they were you know they were somehow he was the only smart one and they were all they all thought like the sun actually you know had legs and had a forehead and actually does this and then samir comes out of nowhere and then wants to reject it because it makes sense to him this just shows lack of understanding or that you're not genuine that you actually know what it means you understand understand the metaphor behind it but you just find trying to find excuses for your weakness and inability to wake up and pray fajr and wash yourself five times a day as you claimed that is as you claim your words that that, that was a ridiculous thing to do and adhkar alam i think uh, we're done with this guy uh he's been refuted time and time again i don't think we should waste, waste time again uh any more time for uh for this guy we're done with him let's move on to allah to something better uh, thank you very much, Ya Ikhwa, for being uh, here. Subhanallah, bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ant. Astaghfiruka tubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'a barakatuh.